All right. So, last time I talked about Werner diagram and then introduced Delaunay triangulation, discussed various properties of both of them. Today, I am going to talk about computing them. So, I will begin with Warnoy diagram and show an algorithm to compute them and then I will say what it means in terms of Delaunay triangulation. Okay. So, let us uh, begin. If you remember that uh, you are given a set of points in, in 2 D and the definition of So, that was the definition of Voronoi cell. Before I describe the algorithm, I need to introduce a concept and what I will do is, I will reduce computing the Voronoi diagram in 2 D to computing the convex hull of a set of points in 3 D and that is what I will do and then I will say well, although you have not seen in the class, but you will see it later how you compute, uh, compute the convex hull of a set of points in 3 D and this reduction that I will do works in any dimension and that will also describe or explain what I said about the complexity of Warner diagrams in higher dimensions. Okay. So, the concept I need is what is called lower envelope. And I will talk about lower envelopes more uh, next week. But suppose you are given a set of functions for our application, let us assume each uh, function is a bivariate function, but it can be again any number of variables you can have. It is hard for me to draw pictures in 3D. So, I will draw for univariate functions. So, let us say that uh, this is a function f 1, this is f 2, let us say this is f 3, or let me just keep only 3. Then the low envelope, which I will denote as L of, of x, that is minimum So, what I am doing is I am taking the point wise minimum of these functions. So, in particular in this example, what it means is that I just trace the lower boundary. So, So, this red curve that you see that that is a graph of the lower envelope because I am staying the point wise minimum. But what you notice is if you trace the lower envelope, then let us see if I can use this technology. Never mind. So, in the beginning left side you have f 3 that is showing on the low envelope. So, here you have uh, 3, then function 2 shows up on the envelope, then the function 1 shows on the lower envelope, then again 3, then 2, then 1 and so these are called breakpoints so 
So, if you, if you trace the lower envelope, what is happening is one function is showing on the envelope, then at there is a you switch from one function to another function, then some other function shows on the envelope and so on. So, what happens is that if you look at the, since I have drawn univariate function, what this low envelope does is, it partitions the real axis or the x axis into intervals, so that the same function appears on the, on the envelope within each interval. So, you have uh, this is one interval, this is another interval. So, you have a side, the real axis is partitioned into in intervals, where the same function appears on the envelope. So, this partition of the real axis into this intervals, that is called minimization diagram. It will become a clear in a minute what has this to do with the Voronoi diagrams. Thinking a little ahead, the way I define the lower envelope, one can also define what is called upper envelope of a set of functions. So, if I let me choose my another favorite color, uh, that won't show, that is what I am uh, thinking. Let us see, let me do green, I think this is fine. So, that is a point was maximum. I will not write it down. So, uh, so, so low envelope was point was minimum, you were tracing the lower envelope and upper envelope is point wise maximum of a set of functions. Okay. Now, why I need this? What I will do is I will define a function f i. is a distance from x to p i. Okay. So, what does this function look like, if you look at the graph of this function? Oh, well, I, I did not teach the minimization diagram yet, I am just asking you. So, if you look at the function f i x, what does what is the shape of this function? So, it is the Euclidean distance you are talking about. So, if I draw this function, what 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 will it look like? Uh, no, no, I do not go to Bernoulli cell yet. It is a very much it. So, function f i have defined is uh, for a given point x in the let us say if you, if this notion is confusing, think about as f i x y and let us say p i is its coordinates are a i b i then this is uh, root x minus a i square plus y minus b i, right. That is cyclic distance, that is a distance function. Go ahead. Pardon? No, it is not a sphere. So, yeah, it is a cone, right, because uh, sphere is a label set of this function. So, it is a circle. So, so, if I look at this function, that looks like well, again, so let me try to draw. So, if you, this is point p i, that is how the function will look like, this cone. So, this is f uh, function f i. 
So, if you took the point any x, this value is f i x. Now, if I look at the lower middle lip, so now you have this functions f i 1 for each point. Now, you get the set of functions f n. You did this uh, uh, for each point. Now, I look at the lower middle lip. So, this is minimum. So, what the lower envelope means? What is this function L lower envelope of these functions mean? So, remember the lower low envelope is uh, point wise minimum, am I right? So, when I look at these particular functions, where the f i is a distance from x to p i, then what is the lower envelope correspond to? It will be surface, but what does the point in there mean? Yes, so it is a distance from x to the nearest point, am I right? So, this is the distance from x to the nearest point in S. And this is <coughs> related to Varnoy diagram, the way it is defined is a minimum point. Now, if I look at the minimization diagram, of f of this set of functions. Now, here I had done the in, the, in the in this figure minimization diagram I had shown was for one dimensional function for univariate functions. If I want to do it for 2D functions, bivariate functions, then so I just put it here and it will work. So, suppose this here is your x y plane and if you had a set of functions you do the low envelope, now what you will get is you will get some partition of the plane into some regions. And here let us say f 1 is uh, uh, minimum here f 2, f 3, f 4 and so on. In the different regions uh, faces the different function will appear on the envelope. Okay. So, it will be uh, instead of a uh, when you talk about bi bivariate, bivariate functions, instead of a partition of the line into intervals, what happens now is you have a partition of the plane into regions, okay? so that the same function appears on the envelope. All right. Now, can you guess what does the minim minimization diagram of this function will correspond to? So, if you look at a, a region, so within each region same function f i appears on the envelope, am I right? Because that is the definition of the minimization diagram. That was the definition of the minimization diagram. So, what does it mean is that if you look at the any region, it is the same function appears on the envelope. And in the case, in this particular case, a function appearing on the envelope, it means it is the nearest neighbor and that is precisely the definition of the Voronoi cell. Okay. So, this basically it means that this region corresponds to the Voronoi of P i. So, if you take the minimization diagram and look at each region, each region in this minimization diagram corresponds to the Voronoi cell of the point. 
So, minimization diagram of f this is a nothing but Voronoi diagram of s. So, what I have shown you is what the Voronoi diagram means is you define a set of functions, these are the distance functions, you look at the point as minimum and look at the minimization diagram, which is nothing but take the functions and you project it on the plane, you get the uh, diagram. So, one way of thinking about uh, uh, this is as follows, you draw these cones, this is one point, let me do it on the piece of paper. So, you draw these cones around each point. Well, I have drawn the finite cones, but these cones extend to infinity and you look from below, you see some surface. That is called Varnoy surface, you project it down on the plane, you get the Varnoy diagram. Okay. So, but so what? Okay. Yeah. Yes, because uh, that is a very good question. If and you will you will see in a minute, if you have a cone, if you take the two cones, these cones are, are identical. In general, that is not the case. If you take that uh, take the two arbitrary cones, intersect them, it is not a, uh, if you look at the bisect the intersection curve, project it, you will get a parabola, okay, or uh, some conic. But in, in these special cones, these are two identical cones, they just shifted then you the you get the parabola you get of the intersection curve, then you project it, it will be a line which will be nothing but the perpendicular bisector of these two points of the apices. But you are asking a question, just keep it in mind, in next class you will see the consequence of what you are asking the question. So, so yeah, it looks sort of miracle, but that is what really happens and you will see why what is going on in a minute. Any questions about what I said so far? All right, so it relates to this question. So, so why this cones, which are quadratic curves, quadratic surfaces, why does it lead to polygonal regions, convex, nice convex regions? And here is the reason. So, I define. Let me start a new page. Let me define G i x is a square of. quadratic of uh, square of that function, which in this case, I remember there was a square root i I remove the square root. Okay. So, this becomes So, this is nothing but a paraboloid. I took the square, if you look at this equation, this, is, this function is a paraboloid. Now, what I am going to do is, I am going to subtract the quadratic term. So, I define y square. So, what you get the quadratic term disappears. Ah, thank you. Okay. 
So, I started with a cone, when I squared it, I got a uh, paraboloid, when I removed the quadratic term, I got an equation of a plane. So, this is a linear function, this is a plane and this was paraboloid. All right. So, what is all this good for? And here is the main claim. So, let h be the set of n planes. And here is a claim. Varnoy diagram of S, which we know is the lower envelope is the minimization So, what I am saying is that I started with functions f and in the two stages I transformed them to function h and during this transformation the, min the functions have changed, but the minimization diagram has not changed. Can someone guess, can someone argue why this is the case, why the minimization diagram has not changed during this is, uh, transformation? Not constant, x is That is right. So, what I am doing is, uh, as is squaring does not affect anything and I am subtracting a common term, so it does not affect. So, let me just go through it. So, here is the proof. So, what I need to argue is that if for any x, if f i is less than f j, that implies that h i should be less than h j. If I can argue that, then minimization diagram will not change, because the relative uh, ordering of functions has not changed at any point. So, what I need to prove is, this implies that the same inequality should also be true for h i x and h j x. Well, I have this tendency of thinking of x as a vector instead of a, a scalar. So, let me just continue with that. So, uh, so, this implies by the way, one thing I should say that f i and f j are non-negative functions, otherwise you, there will be trouble, little bit trouble. Okay, so, since they are non-negative, then this is the case, because the squaring both sides does not change the inequality. You see that what the mess I am creating, because uh, by Maybe I should be careful and put a y also there to avoid confusion. I feel like a kid playing with a magic slate that I used to do as a kid. So, it is a f i square x y minus x square. Okay. And this is nothing but Okay. 
because this was the definition of this was nothing but uh, this is h i x y and this is s g x y. Okay. All right. So what I so what it means is that <coughs> the the minimization diagram of these cones is nothing but the minimization diagram of these planes. And let me show you geometrically what's happening. So we started with these cones. Let me draw the picture in 1D because it is easier for me to draw. So, you had these cones. and this was the, uh, the minimization diagram. I squared it, I replaced them by by parabola. In that process, I did not change minimization diagram. In the third step, what I did was I subtracted minus x square minus y square term in this one minus x square. So, what you think about is that you think about this horizontal line x axis as being a flexible bar. What you are doing is you are bending it downward. When you bending downward this horizontal line is by becoming a parabola or in this one dimension parabola and this parabola are stretching to a straight line. So, what happens is that this becomes like this and and the originary parabola they become lines in this way tangent to this parabola parabola and the same thing happens in high dimensions also and the minimization diagram did not change in this process but nice thing is that minimization diagram is now the minimization diagram of these lines in this one and if i think about so this is the set of points that lies below all the lines so it lies below each line So, it is a set of points that lies below all the lines. If you think about half plane bounded by this line lying below this line, then this region is nothing but the intersection of these half planes or in 3D to the half spaces. Okay. So, let me go now to the next page. So, if I define gamma i is the So, it is basically the half space lying below the plane h i. So, here was your let us say h i then the, the region lying below it that is a gamma i. Okay. Then the minimization diagram or the low envelope is the same as the intersection of gamma i, which is what I drew here. That the low envelope of these lines is nothing but the intersection of these half space. Now, you have heard about learnt about intersection of half planes or half spaces. So, it is a and so you take the intersection of half spaces, it is a convex polytope. 
And what you do is you take the intersection of these half spaces and you project it in the plane. And you get the Barnoid diagram. And I assume you have heard of duality, am I right? Okay. So, so what it sort of says is that you wanted to compute the Barnoid diagram of a set of points. And what I reduced it to through this process, I reduced it to computing an intersection of n half spaces. Okay. So, computing Vernoy of is reduced to computing in 3D. Now, how do I compute the intersection of half spaces? I do the use the duality. Now, what I do is just for some, uh, it will be easier to think about. I will reverse the z di direction okay so if i reverse the z direction in the 2d i reverse the y direction then the what happens earlier you were looking at the point wise minimum but if you look at it when i reverse the v, uh, y direction you are looking at the point wise maximum am i right so so if i define so where was hi was h i was the equation was minus 2 i a x minus 2 b y plus a i square plus b i square. Now, let me I define h i bar x y is uh, 2 a i x plus 2 b y by <coughs> square. Okay. So, this is the I just took the negation of it. And now, if I apply the duality, then what the duality does is the following. Let me write. So, the becomes to a i to b i that is what it maps to. And let Now, what is the intersection of half spaces correspond to when you look at the dual convexal, right? So, now what happens is that you had this intersection of half spaces gamma i, I took these points, I dualized them, then dual of intersection of gamma i maps to convexal of h star. So, what I did was I started a set, set of points in 2 D 
I wanted to compute the Varnoi diagram. I mapped them to a planes in 3D, and I said Varnoi diagram is nothing but take the intersection of these half spaces and project them. Now, I did the user duality. I mapped them to a set of points in 3D, and I am saying it is a dual of the intersection of these half spaces is nothing but the convex hull of these point sets. So, what I did was if I put the, all the pieces together, the Varnoi diagram of a set of points in 2D maps to a convex hull of a set of points in 3D. Now, you will see later in the class that you can compute the convex hull of a set of points in 3D in n log n time. So, convex hull can be computed in log n time. So, what that implies is for now let us assume this as a black box. What this implies is that you can compute the Voronoi diagram of a set of points in 2 D in n log n time. Now, this all everything I said so far except the last sentence it works in d dimensions also in high dimensions. So, the convex uh, uh, Varnoi diagram of a set of points in d dimensions maps to a convex hull of a set of points in d plus 1 dimensions. And there is a classical theorem in, in convexity that if you have a set of n points and if you look at the convex hull of n points, its complexity is n to power d over 2 floor. So, So, what is called actually it is so called upper bound theorem. The number of faces on the convex Now, in our case when you are looking at the Varnoi diagrams in d dimensions, it was a convex hull in d plus 1 dimensions. So, you take the d plus 1 over the floor which is the same as d over 2 ceiling and that is what I had said last time. Any questions? Yes. Generally, I mean, when you do you sh your uh, uh, objective will always be to reduce the dimensionality, right? Instead of increasing it. So, it's not sh shouldn't I uh, take a d, d dimension convex hull and compute no, the well, complexity, right? Well, you could try, but it won't work. <laughs> so, because what what is the case is that uh, one Varnoi diagram by definition, by Varnoi diagram, as I sort of what I showed you was that. Uh, so, that is why I went through this instead of I the reason I went through this whole uh, steps is to sort of sh not to give you as a mystery why that is the case. Because what is the Varnoi diagram? Varnoi diagram is nothing but uh, this minimization diagram because it is inherently defined by the set of functions and the set of functions sit in high dimensions and you are taking their low envelope and projecting them into d dimensions. So, Varnoi diagram involves the projection of a d plus 1 dimensional object to one lower dimension that is why that is how it is coming. And here it is a convex hull in one higher dimension that is why it is in d plus 1 dimension. There is a generalization of one or diagram which I hope I will say it in one higher dimension uh, sorry on Friday what is called power diagram. And one or diagram is a very specific case uh, of that and that is inherently is d plus 1 dimensional object it just happens to be a, uh, a specific case. Uh, for example, 
the way you, another way of thinking about it is the following that the Varnoy diagram is a lower envelope of these planes which are tangent to this paraboloid. Now, in general, if I draw some planes, they will not be tangent to paraboloid. One can talk about the, the taking the uh, some arbitrary planes and take the lower envelope and it will reduce to some generalization of Arnoid diagram and that will be the d plus 1 dimensional object and this just happens to be a special case. Now, here I did the duality am I right because where did I do it? I used a duality here. I took this I had the set of half planes I dualized them to set of points. In the last class I talked about the duality in the planar graph sense, I said Voronoi diagram and the, it is a dual was Dulane triangulation. So, now what is the relationship between this convex hull? What will this convex hull look like? If you take this convex hull, right? So, I am doing a duality here, right? Because here is I am saying the dual of this intersection is a convex hull. But I had this convex hull in one higher dimension of the set H star. Okay. And I take the convex hull. So, what I if I want to go back to Varnoy diagram, what I do is I have the set of points H star, I compute this convex hull, map it back the dual, I get the intersection of these half spaces, and then I project it down. I get the Varnoy diagram. But if I take the convex hull, and I project the convex hull back down to two dimensions because H star is a set of points in 3D. So, convex is a 3D convex hull. If I project it down to the plane, this convex hull, what will I get? I will get the Dulane triangulation of the point set. And to see that, you have to be a little careful because. Yeah. So, in general, they are not, but this is a magic in this case. It just works out like magic in this case. But in general, you are right, it, it does not all work like this. So, so, so this is a that is a general theory, and I am just not showing the whole theory, I am just showing you some kind of a special case of that, and that is why it looks like magic. And I will not have time to really go through the whole stuff and to talk about it when this is it really works. Uh, so, so if you remember that, so H i was 2 A i, 2 B i, A i plus B i square. What I do is I scale it by a factor of 2. So, let us define the set of points. Let us call it uh, H i sharp. I divide each coordinate by a factor of 2. So, I just shrink everything by a factor of 2. So, then what happens? It becomes A i B i and notice that A i B i is a similar to the coordinates of the ith point. So, what happened? So, if I look at the, so if I define H And remember that what was set S, S was to remind you was A i B i. So, if you look at the set S and H sharp, the x and y coordinates are the same. S was a set of points in 2D and H sharp is a set of points in 3D, but the x y coordinates are the same, but they have only z coordinate. So, how do you get H sharp from S? So, this is a lifting transform that you have seen in the class, I believe. Like a 
yes, precisely. So, what you are doing is, is the following. Again, I will draw in the only in one dimension. So, I will write the equation in general in 3D. And if you had the point P i, you just lift it to the parabola. So, if you want to compute a Delaunay triangulation, here is the one way of doing it. Take the set of points, lift them on the paraboloid, z is equal to x square plus y square over 2, take its convex hull, project it down, you get the Delaunay triangulation. So, there is a deep relationship between Wiener diagrams, convex hulls, Delaunay triangulation and convex hulls, they are all related concepts, but you just have to think in one higher dimension. Any questions? So, how do you make the triangulation? Good question, I will answer your question in a minute. Any other questions of what I said so far? I will before I answer her question. So, why is this convex hull is a Delaunay triangulation? I will not give you the complete proof, but I will give you partial proof and then you can fill in the details. Remember what I said for Delaunay triangulation. Delaunay triangulation had the following property. If you took a, if it, this was a triangle P Q R, if it was a triangle, if you take the circumcircle, this does not contain any point, all the points lie outside this circumcircle, am I right? So, that was a property. And let us now talk about what does this correspond to in 3D. So, what I did was I took the set of points in 2D, I mapped them on this paraboloid. Okay. So, so ignore the, uh, so if you have a circle, let us say circle C whose center is let us say alpha i beta i, this is center and this is the i rise the radius. Okay. So, center in the, so you have circle in uh, 2 d and this is r i. So, the equation of the circle is I assume this you have seen, might have seen this one. Okay. And the points lie inside the circle that correspond to, uh, if the point x y lies inside circle, you replace equality by less than equal to, if it is lies outside, it becomes greater than equal to. Okay. So, now if I open it, And if I replace this one with the equation z, then what you get is you can write it ah. Okay. So, what happens is that I took the equation of a circle, I mapped it to a plane in 3 D. So, a circle becomes a plane in the in, in 3 D. And this is a gen general technique in algebra that is used a lot, this is called the 
linearization technique. And it comes in many different uh, areas that number of times it is hard to deal with the higher degree terms variables. And if you convert, take, if you have a function which is, is not nonlinear function polynomial, you can map it to a linear function in higher dimensions. And that is what is going on here. So, you are dealing with the cones or circles and you are mapping it to planes in, in, in one higher dimension. Okay. So, that is what I did. I took the circle and map it to a, it becomes a plane. And if you look at the, what I did was the transformation was x and y did not change, but x square plus y square became z. So, so this transformation, lifting transform, this is called a point x y is being mapped to x y x square plus y square. Which is so very like there is a factor of 2 is issue here, but it is very similar. This is very similar to what was going on earlier, right? A i b i a square plus b a square 2. This is similar. To, so, I am again taking a set of points and mapping it to paraboloid. And the circle now becomes maps to a plane. Then, what really happens is if you look at the convex hull and of these points that are sitting on this. Uh, If you take the convex hull, which uh, in 2D it is a polygonal chain, but what happens in 3D, you will get something like triangles and it will be a, I am not good in drawing these shapes, but it will be, you think about your set of points in the paraboloid, you will get some triangles and you will get some convex polytope. Now, if you take the plane containing one of the triangles, what this happens if you take this plane if you project it, take this intersection with this paraboloid plane and intersection with the paraboloid, when you map it down, you get a circle back. And a point lying above the plane means point lying outside the circle in the plane. So, if you remember that the condition for the Delaunay triangulation was that all the points should lie outside the circle. And what it sort of means here is that all the points lie above the plane. And that is the case because of the convex hull. If you take any triangle of the convex hull and you uh, look at the extent to the plane, that all the points lie above it, none of the points lie below it, because since it is a plane defining the supporting the convex hull. So, what it means is that when you project it back, so the planes are mapping with corresponding to the circles and all the points lie outside the circle, and which is means it is a Delaunay triangulation. Okay. Now, I see that I have about how much time do I have? Few minutes, or I'm out of time. A couple of minutes. So, how do I construct a convex hull of a point set? And let me describe in 2D, and then you can imagine how you happens in 3D. So, think about the special case when the all the points are in convex position. Am I right? Because if a points lie on a paraboloid, on the parabola, all the points, all the points will be vertices of the convex hull. So then, what you do is, you suppose you have computed the convex hull of some points. So think about in two D, you have computed some point. Now I am adding a new point, let's say. Then what you do is, you think about, you compute this tangent in two D. And you are going to remove this portion and replace it at this portion. That is what is uh, what happens. Now, the way you think about uh, the way one way of thinking about physical way of thinking about is you have a convex hull which is a convex polytope in 3D. New point, think about the light source. Whatever it can see when you put the light, some part of the polytope is being seen, some part being is not seen. The portion that is being seen, you remove it you get a hole, which is a silhouette. Take each silhouette as an edge, take this edge, connect to the point, you get the new set of points. In 2D, that is what is happening. You have this edges that you can see, you remove them. In this case, silhouette is only consists of two points, you connect them by segments. But in the 3D, the silhouette will look like some convex polygon and here is your point and you are going to this one. 
Now, what does this correspond to? Now, I said this convex hull is nothing but if you project in the plane, it is nothing but Delaunay triangulation. Then one can ask, do I really have to go through all this mapping or I can think directly in terms of Delaunay triangulation? What is going when you insert a point, what it really goes on? In the next class, I will tell you what it means directly in Delaunay triangulation. Okay, so, I will stop here.